Greetings, my fellow wizards. We are gathered here today on this most somber occasion to commemorate the painting that was. I'm dressed in my finest Lens family funeral attire, the black button-down shirt, as well as your freshest, newest pair of black denim jeans. Coincidentally, this is the same outfit that we wear to weddings and every other day of the year. Recently, I've been working on the Death Elemental. In times of past, but I have captured footage from those days of yore. I'll be laying out the techniques used, creating the non-metallic metal effect on the Death Elemental Scythe, as well as his armored shoulder, his armored arm. There are also some interactions with the spectral blue light, but all will be explained in the video. You'll notice this one is a little bit longer. I am trying to capture a bit more of the detail and narration, and there's also a portion on creating a glowing effect on the gem on his shoulder, so kind of uh, two parts in one video, but sit back, enjoy the ride, and we will explain all of the mysteries. Here floats the scything blade of the Grim Harvest. The first thing I need to do is pick out some of the more major reflective areas. I want to create a non-metallic metal finish, so we're going for shiny but not completely reflective. If that helps to describe the how the light is working in your head but generally everything is already laid down by the zenithal base coat I have a nice overhead light source and a lot of these areas have just been roughly shaded by that primer coat so all I'm doing is going through and just smoothing out what these little speckles of primer have created in some areas you can see this curling spike on the back of his scythe being a prime example a good place to start there are some smaller areas I've got a very kind of eh, kind of a, a digital very very mechanical kind of uh, texture and all these random plates and shapes coming through uh, generally on those I'm, I'm going to have the light flow down towards the lower area of these surfaces just like so. And I'm, I'm wet blending just Vallejo Black and Vallejo Deck Tan together create these quick gradients get everything sketched out laid in place. We'll have a nice powerful reflection kind of building up in the middle of the blade. I have the smoke to contend with as well that will be sending its own uh, effects and and such into these reflections but for now we'll just get this basic uh, sketch laid in place and on the edge of every blade will also be picking kind of a major point of accumulation so we'll have the light build up as it reaches these sharper points like so and I want to add a secondary reflection to these it's not quite as bright it won't come up to the same volume as that main point but it also helps to add to this shimmering waves of light channels of light kind of look that makes our eyes see a shimmering metallic surface it's so about halfway through each of the blends going along these upward facing blades. I'll still be using a mixture of Vallejo deck tan and black, but they won't be coming up to the same brightness here. Just kind of some delicate wet blending. To smooth it out, I will mix up some varying shades of gray, but just for now, in this first pass, we like to start things with a wet blended base coat and then move it along from there. So let's also mix up a little bit of a medium gray here. Get a secondary reflection towards the base of the blade. We'll have it pass into a pure black here. And then back up to the gunmetal gray as it moves towards the center. 
a little bit quicker way to move through this more intensely detailed metallic area. Let's lay down a base coat of black with just a little bit of gunmetal gray. Sorry, <laughs> Vallejo deck tan. Gunmetal gray is the silver that I usually use. But I'll lay down my very deep gray mixture and then pulling some of that deck tan into place just like so. Now on the handle, mix up a larger amount of that deep gray. Just bring it across the entire surface. And I'll take that deck tan and just add a reflective line moving across all these little bits of texture. It's got like a series of runic bands laid across the handle. Everything is engraved. It's a fun detail, but I don't want to get too caught up in all those tiny lines just yet. For now, I'm working the overall gradient. It will come for a, a time for getting more detailed and adding deeper colors, brighter colors. I haven't touched the white so far, it's just been combinations of these two colors back and forth. It's really paying attention to the volume and kind of maximizing what I can do with these two tones before everything becomes too complex. I like to take more of a simplified view of it and then just kind of render things up. Get that little duller secondary reflection that worked in here. The arm here is very detailed as well. And before I go crazy on it, pulling out every single edge and every little nook and cranny, also removing hairs apparently, I'm just going to give it the same treatment that I was giving those more complex areas on the scythe. Give it an all over base coat very deep gray mixture and I just want to pick out the more major and I just want to pick out the more major shapes like the top of the forearm will have a strong amount of light coming down just like so can balance that back and forth with some wet blending up top on the shoulder Generally, right here will be my brightest area. I mean, he's got this, there's a gem in the middle of his shoulder, so it could be casting its own light source. We will definitely play with that later. But for now, keep it nice and simple and just get this rudimentary form laid in place. Now, at the very rudimentary sketch of how the light will be falling across the scythe blade. I'm going to stop here for a moment and paint up the flames, just following the same colors um, covered in a previous video, but for the sake of information, I just wanted to stop and share what I'm doing at this step before we jump too far ahead. So it'll just be a wet blend of arcane blue from P3 up to Vallejo black, and then bits of the Vallejo deck tan to create some of the smoky highlights. I also want to get this glowing gem in his shoulder started off. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll just kind of set the radius up. All right, I'll jump back to the non-metallic metal action as soon as I get this smoke filled in. Just have to catch this bit up to the rest of the model. Here it is after just getting some of that turquoise and smoke laid in. Just a better way to look at the model in my opinion. A little easier on the eye. But I have a lot of refining to do. All of the uh, gradients are laid in place. Very rough, sketchy idea of how things are going to be falling. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take amounts of Leodectan, very, very small amounts, and just start to cap off a lot of these rough gradients, smoothing things out with very, very small measured amounts of paint. Notice how much mileage I'm getting out of just a single brush load of paint. 
and everything is mapped out for me with the wet blending so I just need to go carry over those areas and just gradually build everything up here and there I'll mix down a deeper gray just controlling the volume on these secondary reflections nothing against wet blending some of these thinner glazes together but we'll be going through I'll be doing this in at least three layers because I want a nice saturated result on all these colors to be showing through nice nice and pure and if, I've been hooked on this Vallejo deck tan lately because it's just gray with the slightest touch of warmth and I just I find it so useful as I'm always trying to add small subtleties into the mixtures I'm creating. Let's take a look at this larger gradient so we can kind of blow up some of this brushwork. There's nothing wrong with blending your glazes together so I can take the black and the deck tan. Let's lay some very thin amounts down. Just gradually smoothing this mess out. I'll have to pull some of that arcane blue into place, but not quite yet. For now, I'm still just concentrating on the metal surfaces and bringing those up. Now, in some of these tighter areas, I just need to be mindful. Use very small amounts of paint. See how much paint is on my brush. Very teeny tiny amount. I'll even take a little bit off on my glove. And everything is roughly sketched out from the wet blending so I'm just going in just like all the other areas but it's worth noting that is all about a controllable amount of paint in this situation using a very large brush a very small amount of paint just note how much distance I'm getting out of a single brush load move across quite a few surfaces before going back for more. It's better to work in this way with these just very small measured amounts of paint. You can always add more. This is the many thin layers that we all hear about. That'll mix up a secondary shadow. The bottom part of his forearm is facing the ground so a little bit of light will be bounced up off of the earth but not quite as much as that area that's facing straight up. But that is kind of the beast of non-metallic metal. You want this, you can have a very tarnished and dull, minimally reflective version of non-metallic metal. Say for example maybe a cast iron skillet, or some very roughly hand-pounded orc army to keep it more relevant to the fantasy realm here talk about pots and pans another time or you have the very polished almost mirror-like effect where it's taking on a lot of the colors of its environment but it's up to us as the artist to kind of dial up that intensity decide if we want to crank the reflections up to 11 or keep them at a nice subtle 4 here and there where I have space I want to add make this look just a little more interesting so kind of in the mid to upper zone let's pull just a line of light reflecting it will get very uh, complex if I try to pack this kind of reflection into every space available but wherever I can fit it like on this flatter panel on the inside of his forearm just draw a very thin line deck tan across the surface just kind of adds to that shimmering shine with a little bit more in smoothening taking place it was now time for a touch of the edge highlights just want to sharpen a lot of these hard edges pull out some of these panels Acknowledging that top-down light source, I want things to kind of accumulate in the correct area. Just paying attention as the light is 
coming down from on the top of his shoulder so we'll highlight all the upward facing edges these little panels and patterned disc like openings pull out the edges these spikes going up his shoulders and do a bit of blending with the smaller brush as well but generally just rendering things to a finer and tighter extent you can see now when we pick out all the edges of these little armor panels those gradients make a little bit more sense so the light would kind of hit this upper facing sharper edge I'll have a nice bright line going across it you can see I'm also not diluting my paint as much there's a bit of moisture on the brush but other than that it's pretty much straight out of the bottle you know that bit of moisture is going to always make things apply a little bit more easily a little smoother so just keeping my bristles damp taking very small controllable amounts of paint bring these edge highlights in place notice I'm using the side of the brush here as well press it very very lightly it's also a very sharp edge so thanks creature caster makes it easier to paint okay balancing the deck tan and the levels of black is finally coming to a close of course those colors will be useful in the next steps down the line but at this point I'm creating a wash from black paint and also black ink so the black paint is going to keep the ink from turning too glossy and the ink is going to add a kind of a viscous quality to this mixture the wash like qualities so I get a better flow more even coverage than I would have just from watering down paint the ink will help it to flow into the crevices so we'll just give it an all over pass of that mixture I would say it's about 30% ink, 30% paint, the rest is all water. You can see when I lay a heavy amount on, it's somewhat cloudy. You want to make sure to stretch it out, really pull it across as much of the surface as you can. Just take note of how much distance I'm getting from a brush load. It's diluted correctly, but you can leave too much of that in one place and create a mess so think of this as an all over sheet of tint a layer of glaze and of course those inky qualities will accumulate in the crevices black lining everything sharpening all these details as well as toning a lot of these gradients down bonding them together just like so. Areas like the blade I'll take a very very thin coat and just glaze it over again just encasing everything in a thin shell just assisting those gradients with a little bit of a filter just because I have this wash not every area needs it quite as heavily as the other areas and here it stands following the black wash I have a few more colors to contend with I have this bright white I also have more uh, turquoise intensity to bring into the situation let's go ahead and create a turquoise glow in this area let's go for the illuminated lens look instead of the semi-transparent gem So it'll be a base coat of arcane blue. That'll just blend a little bit of this white into the middle. We'll edge highlight the surrounding area, some arcane blue. It's framed up really nicely, so it's it's very easy to measure the distance. Everything is symmetrical as it comes out this way. And then the area 
closer to the lens, we'll just get a base coat of pure turquoise. Let's bring just a little bit of edge highlighting, all these little tabs that are leaning towards this illuminated lens. Grab some turquoise ink, lay that down. This can come out about the same distance as all that edge highlighting. The idea being this will provide a nice thin filter. It should dry and be much less visible as it desaturates a little bit, but you see the effect, not a bad glow. We'll let that sit in its place and dry. So I also have my final white highlights. I may do some black lining. I'm never completely finished with a color as I'm... I wish it was just a one, two, three step-by-step -step process, but you know the truth. Sometimes a balancing act is the best method, so here and there I may pull in some of that deck tan create more highlights. I may have to drop in a black line where a certain area isn't quite uh, well defined as I would like it to be after the wash. But that's art, you know, it's it's not a it's not baking, it's not an exact recipe every time. And sometimes it comes out a little bit different. These knuckles present an interesting shape. Instead of just covering it entirely in white edge highlights, I use a series of tiny dots and slashes. Every one of these edges can be its own gradient, its own micro blend. And you don't want to cover up the previous layers of edge highlighting leading up with that deck tan. So as we're working, covering less and less of the surface process speeds up a little bit and following a bit of highlighting on the arm move my attention back to the this little glowing portion of his shoulder just continue to bring up the center mixing amounts of arcane blue and white together until I have a near white glowing dot in the middle And it'll also carry a mixture of that white and arcane blue across the boundaries here. Edge highlighting these raised areas. And also along this boundary, as things are gradually blended together, just want to bring a little bit of white highlight, well a white and turquoise mixture, but a little bit of an edge highlight. It's kind of lining along the connection where the smoke is coming off of the blade and also those holes that the flame is coming out of. And one more white highlight just making sure the center of that blade gets nice and bright. Now I'll grab a very thin coat of turquoise ink. Just glaze it in place. Laying it down a little bit heavier, but again, you don't want it pooling up. You don't want to lose control. But I'm trying to get a little more colorization out of this coat of ink. We'll bring some of that across the flames as well, just smoothing it out. And with that first pass dry, let's do one more coat. Now it's starting to modify the black that's laying underneath. It'd be very uh, gradual and delicate with this. All right, we'll do one more pass. Just bringing this turquoise ink over the dark areas of the blade. Excellent. Let that sit and dry. And here he proceeds. The death elemental, gleaming in the night. Something so unreal, you don't want to see it.
but yet it is painfully real. I hope you enjoyed this video, the insight on the process. I would encourage you to go back in the catalog on Patreon and look at the intro to non-metallic metal as well as the advanced non-metallic metal videos to better explain how I'm finding these reflective qualities. Of course, to more advanced students, a little bit less explanation is needed, but that material is there to expand upon. Feel free to ask all the questions, log your feelings, your deepest concerns in the comments below. I'm always very grateful for your support on this Patreon and hearing feedback from the people who are contributing to this. You are exactly the people that I'd want to hear from. Until next time, remember, practice and patience makes perfect. And just as your skills are building, no castle was built in a single day, unless it was some kind of magical castle or aliens.